Good morning, what's going on? It is day two on the Allegheny Front Trail. It is 7 a.m. I am already broken down. I was up at 5.30. Um, had my breakfast, had my coffee. It was dark. It looks clear though. The moon was out, there were stars out, so it looks like it's gonna be a nice day. I'm going to relocate over to a better part of the creek where I'm going to filter some water, and it should be light enough to get on a trail by that time. It's, you can kind of see, it's starting to get bright out there. Talk about how things went last night. It was interesting. No, no visitors, but might have had gear failure. <laughs> so I'll talk about that in a little bit. Let me go get some water because I had just enough. And then we'll get going. Once it's a little brighter, I'll bring it back. All right, it is 7:23. I've got my water. I am ready to go. I uh, I stopped, got my hat off. No hoodie. It's about 45, but it feels pretty warm. Um. Yeah, I think, I think my climate static V has a leak. I'm not entirely sure. It may have just been because it was cold last night. But when I woke up, I was really uncomfortable. I realized it's because I was touching the ground. And, uh, I mean, I slept pretty good. But, it, I mean, it is what it is. I, I can't, I, when I get to camp, uh, I want to try to get camp a little bit early. Because I did get a lot of condensation. It was a little humid. And I had the fly closed, so the inside of the tent is a little damp. I wiped it down as best I could, but try to get that aired out. And I was going to repair the mat if needed, but then I remembered I didn't bring the bag. And the repair kit's in the bag. <laughs> so, I might be sleeping on the ground tonight. I have to make sure I pick a really good campsite. So, I'm going to get going here. Hike along the Red Mo to start. And it looks like for... I stay at a pretty consistent elevation. There's not any big climbs until a little later on, but I don't, they don't look really bad. I was looking at the map last night and I've either got to go like 14 to 17 miles, or I got to go like 22 miles because the, the park is there. You can't camp in the park and around the park is really swampy. So, We'll see. See what the campsite looks like when I get to around 14 to 11, um, going the opposite way, like back to the car. So that will make my decision. Well, this section of the trail is completely different than anything I've hiked so far since I've been here. This is a lot rockier, a lot more enclosed. I can hear the red mow down there at the bottom. Getting closer to that. Broke out the trekking poles with rocks and leaves. <laughs> it can be a little bit sketchy. So, figured for this part at least, I will use the poles until I get my hiking legs back for the day. I know it doesn't seem like that should happen. Like you're out here backpacking and you should be able to just pop up and start going. But especially when you might have a deflating mat and you weren't as comfortable as you were hoping to be uh, getting moving again in the morning. It does take a minute. Now I'm in no hurry. I've got an extra three hours today compared to what I had yesterday with about the same distance to go. So I can enjoy any of the sights I see a little bit more today. Which I expect there to be more stuff to see today. There's a red mill. Some color over in that mountain and some color in that water. You.
So here's a little interesting thing that happens in the morning that you notice more when it's a little chilly. You can see the sun is hitting that ridge up there. And as the sun starts to come up and it starts to warm up those ridges, any cold air from up there drops. And as I'm hiking along, I just felt the temperature drop a couple degrees. It'll warm back up. It's only temporary, but yep. When it's cold, the coldest part of the day is usually right at sunrise. This is gorgeous in here. Look at this. Love it. Love it so far. Great trail. You don't want to slip here because that just drops. Can get an angle of that? Probably not. That's really steep. If you were to slip there, you would just plinko your way all the way down through the street. Went it right in the creek. That would suck. That's a pretty good angle of it. Look how steep that is. I'm a mile and a half in for the day, and this is the first campsite I've seen past where I stayed. And even this isn't all that flat. It looks like there might be a tent pad up there. So, good thing I stopped when I did. It would have been dark by the time I got up here. And there might be some other campsites up here, but it wouldn't have mattered if it was dark. I'm approaching Tark Run. And here, it sounds like there's like a waterfall over here. Yeah, I saw one other spot back there, about a half mile from camp, where I could have put a tent. It was right next to the trail. This is a flat spot I could have used, but I like my little spot. Oh, a log bridge. Still uh, has remained fairly rocky. There's been a few uh, decently long sections with no rocks whatsoever, but not not horrible. Oh, this is gorgeous. Let's see how slippery this is. Not bad. Pretty grippy, but <laughs> it's not the most even thing. Nice spot. And in not too terribly long, I will come across, uh, I think it's called Sawdust or Sawmill Run. Sawdust, I think. And then there'll be a little climb up to what is marked on the map as a vista. But when I was looking at the map, the paper map I grabbed yesterday, that thing's from 2013. They have not updated this map. It's pretty accurate. I don't think they've really changed the trail. But some of those vistas are growing in. All right, let me work my way over this. All right, pretty easy to get over. This is a pretty fresh fall. And this is what I've been coming across. If there's anything down across the road, it's stuff like this. And this wood is soaked. So it's super heavy and they're just falling over. And that's what I was afraid was going to happen with that uh, tree by that campsite last night. Because that thing was pretty wet and it's about that, that mushy. So anything that's been down across the trail hasn't been too bad so far. You got to expect it every now and then. But it seems like they get out here fairly often and clear these things out. Because even where some of these have fallen, you can see 
not far from them there have been other other down trees that have been cut so it's just a matter of time Right down on the red mow, and you can just see all the it's just algae in there. And whatever this stuff is, it's slippery as snot. Oh, I hope that came through as a hawk. That's cool. And if I could have pushed down here, this would have been a beautiful campsite. And there's water just back behind me. Check out this old campsite here. This would have been gorgeous. Lots of room for a tent. You get a hammock in here. A couple of hammocks actually. But wasn't meant to be last night. Are those beavers trying to dam off the Moshannon? Are they trying to get one of these smaller creeks? Oh, it might actually help the Moshannon get some beavers in here. Oh, I got duck. Oh, the Moshannon. It's pretty wide down here. Still red. It's a lot wider. Gorgeous out there. Gorgeous in here. Beautiful day. This is really nice. Another nice campsite. I am, uh, according to the guidebook, to be like mile. 25 and a half something like that it's up uh, there's the looks like my really big climb for the day there's a couple more climbs but this look like the steepest wasn't too bad it was just, it was steep it wasn't that long though but the bad thing about this climb is you come up you got this campsite which you'd have to bring your water in because there's no water up here uh there's a vista hopefully <laughs> and then you drop right back down to the river so you just come up here for this vista hope this vista is not gone that would really suck no vista it's grown over i have one gripe about the the maps that the state forest put out is that they don't update them often enough the map I have is from 2013. That's 10 years old. I really wish they would update them more. If you're not gonna, I understand trees grow. If you're not gonna clear the, the vistas out so you can see out of them, take the vista off the map. That's pretty simple. You got people who are like, just kind of looking forward to that. The big climb, get up there. I mean, you could kind of see out through the trees, but it wasn't, it would never come through in a video or a photo. You can kind of see the river down here, but. I mean, the trail goes that way. It's not like you're going out of your way to go up to the vista. You're on the trail. But if you're expecting a little bit of a payoff and it's not there, it kind of sucks. So if someone from DC and R watches this, please update your map more than 10 every 10 years. That'd be nice. Start my climb up away from Red Mill. Just about three and a half miles in for the day. This section has been... A lot slower going than anything I had yesterday. Not super difficult, just rocky and these leaves make it a little bit difficult. But I am about to come to my first road crossing. And I'm going on, uh, it's almost 10 o'clock and I've still yet to see a soul since I got here yesterday. <laughs> 24 hours without seeing a person. Ooh, this washed out. 
Well, that must have sucked. But yeah, I think when I get to that road, I might drop my pack and have a snack. It'll be about time. I'm up to the road. Looks like this is just recently improved. I did hear quite a large truck drive through here. <laughs> so I'm guessing they gotta keep it in pretty good shape. I'm gonna follow this down a little bit. I know I gotta cross back over to the left. I'm gonna find a spot here where it didn't drop straight off the edge. I'll drop my pack. Have my snack. Hmm. Huh. Wonder what they're doing up there. It's big trucks. Um I guess I'll just drop my pack right here. Have his neck. Heading to Route 504. This is about 2.7 miles, so I'm gonna call it three. And once I get there. We'll see how long it takes, see how uh, this section is. I know I go up, uh, climb a little bit, and I drop back down to, I think it's called Six Mile Run. It's a creek. See if it's rocky or smooth. Now they turn once I get to 504 when I'm going to stop for lunch. It's 10 o'clock right now. I'm thinking 12 30, 12 12 30, something like that. Should be good. This is awesome. Yeah, look at that stairway. Very cool. Crest at that little hill down here. And this is six mile run. Found a little campsite here. This isn't bad. Trees all look good for the most part. Now, six mile run is flowing towards Redmo. So I would I would take water from here. If it was flowing away from you know out of Redmo, I would not. What a difference in the water. Looks so normal compared to the Moshannon. Okay, I stay down along the creek now. I think pretty much until I get up to a 504, according to the map. Looks like there's another campsite down there. There might be a few little climbs and they could get around stuff. But. All right, that wasn't too bad coming over that. There's a lot of big flat rocks. Not bad. If you're going counterclockwise, like I am. You get down to the bottom, the trail turns here. There's no no blaze that marks it, but it does turn here. Oh, this is the first little bit of history I've seen really since I've been out here. An old foundation. Whenever it was part of an old mill or something. I did see something in the guidebook. So skimming through uh So this is pretty cool. This is the first little bit of history I've seen out here. Um, old foundation. I do remember reading something about an old uh, mill that used to be out here. It would make sense or near the water, but really not. Hmm. Pretty cool though.
Whoa. Oh, look at that. Got a little bit of a switch back here and it has steps. Nice use of the rocks here. I'm not sure how far from 504 I am. I'm not that far. This section of the trail has been really nice. Pretty flat. A few spots like this where you got some rocks, but nothing crazy. I've been taking my time, enjoying the views, in no rush. Been a beautiful day. Made it to 504. 2.7 miles, pretty accurate. I'm at a little over six and a half. The trail crosses here, so I'm going to do. And I guess this is the parking area they got listed. It's not much of a parking area. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to follow the trail here for a second. Where's it go? There's a marker there. Oh, it goes over the bridge. Okay. I'm going to go... Uh, this goes down to a creek, I think. And I think I'll stop there for lunch. Uh, all right, there's a blaze right there. Had my turkey sticks and cheese. Had a little pink lemonade. I'm gonna snack on some crackers, enjoy this creek a little more. Because I know right after this I gotta climb. Then I, I run along, go back over to six mile run on the other side of the hill here, and then follow that for a little longer. All right, lunch is over. Cleaned up all my stuff. Time to keep moving. I'm almost at the halfway point of the trail. Probably in the next mile or three quarters of a mile or so. I don't know if it's marked or not, but yeah, so this is what I've got. I uh, come around here. I thought, oh, <laughs> I'll stop. I'll stop somewhere along this. And then the trail turns and just goes up. So I gotta get up and over this to get to back over to six mile run. So that's what I'm gonna work on now. Figured eat before I tackle the hill. Pretty steep, but short that climb. And you can see where the road level is down there. I just climbed up from that. Only took a minute. But it brings you right up to this you know, old road grade or this might be logging grade or I wanna say a railroad grade, but in a weird spot. I'll take it though. Not sure how long I stay on this, but it's a nice break. Oh yeah, no, the camera's just not doing that justice. This is really cool. It's like this little hollow in here. It's all pines. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, this is something you gotta see. You gotta see with your own eyes. It just doesn't do it justice. All right, you gotta get out here and see it. Moving right along this section I've been on. I've been able to just cruise, so I've been doing it, taking advantage of it. At about 19 miles to go for the trail now. So I'm well past halfway, there was no marker of it. So I just kept going. I'm gonna drop down, I think I 
I meet back up with six mile run down here. I think that's the water, the river. And I'm not sure if it's, that looks like a forest road down there. Like no logging road, nothing will be on that. I wouldn't mind it for a little while. Helps chew up those miles. Another section done. I'm now at Shields Dam Road, Clay Mine Road, and Six Mile Run. I want to go across that way. I was able to cruise through that section. Hopefully, I got a little bit more of the same. A little bit more. Almost at 10 miles. Now. Oh, I saw my first people. Not technically on the trail, but there's a little bit of a road hike there. You come off the AFT and you turn up. Clay mine road a little bit, go across the bridge and come back up. Um, and there's a yeah, local guy walking his dog, and he's kind of holding the dog as I'm walking by. Because, oh, he was, he, he might if he comes over and says hi to you, loves people. And I'm like, oh, absolutely. So I got to meet Tinker, <laughs> cool little dog. Um, <laughs> Where'd the blaze go? Where'd the blaze go? Dead ahead? I don't know. Huh. This is a rarity where I can't see the next blaze. I only forgot which one goes. Yeah, section. Definitely looks like it had some kind of weather event up here. I mean, not far from, you know, is it like about 30 miles from Quihanna, uh Parker Dam State Park. Now the timing might be right. It might have been the same storm that hit up there. But, uh, they have all that tor tornado damage up there. At least it's cut. So I am crossing Horse Hollow Road. Ironically, no horses allowed, at least on the trail. I am heading up to Wolf Rocks. I got like a little over a tenth of a mile or so to climb up. They're supposedly pretty cool according to the guidebook. So we'll check those out. And I come down off the other side and there's a couple campsites over there. So I'm probably within a mile of where I'm gonna camp. There's one that's a little further down. It's the second one that I see in the guidebook heading that direction. That is, it says it's in the Grove of Hemlocks and there's a spring right up the trail from it. So that sounds like a dandy place to me. So that's what I'm gonna head to. Now put me in really good shape. They'll put me under 14 miles, just under 14 miles for tomorrow. So that'll be good. I'm right now at 13.63 uh, for the day. Oh, pretty cool. So it's, I don't know if I'm all the way up to the top here, but getting to Wolf Rocks so it took a minute. So you can see the road is right there. This is pretty cool. Oh yeah, it is. That is scat. That is, that looks like porcupine. That is a lot. That whole pile is probably a foot and a half high. It's poo. Oh, it's over here too. It's all there. Poo here, it's everywhere. That's 
Yeah, it's definitely porcupine. Oh well, this just keeps going. This is pretty neat. Trip over my trucking. So I'm trying to look at this and the watch where I'm going at the same time. All kinds of little crevices in here for things to hide in. All right, well, that was pretty cool. Wolf rocks. <sighs> so I've got a spring right here. And just past it, got this big open area here. Trail goes right by it, but I literally have not seen anyone else hiking. I talked to the guy with the dog, Tinker, and the only other person I've interacted with <laughs> when I just, when I was crossing that horse hollow road, I uh, pulled my sit pad out and I was sitting on the rock there, just looking at the guidebook and scouting for campsites. And Guy pulls up, puts his window down, just looks over. He's like, you good? I'm like, I'm good. All right, he drove off. So that was very nice of him. So, um, yeah, if you recognize me if that was you and you stopped to see if I was okay, I appreciate that. Thank you. Not everybody would do that. But, yeah, I'm going to pick a spot here for the tent. I'm going to get that set up. Uh, thinking over here. I'm going to put the tent. It's really flat. And uh, let it air out a little bit. And see what's going on with my with my pad. Now I was thinking this morning as I was hiking, I started thinking about it. I was like, you know, when I got to camp, I was rushing around, really trying to find somewhere set because I was losing daylight. So I was really running around. And then I quick set up and I just inflated the, the pad. So the air might have been very moist. You like that word? Uh so when it got cold, it may have just contracted a lot. That is a very good possibility. So we'll see. I'll throw the tent up. Yeah, I think over here looks good. Anywhere in here looks good. Uh, that might be a little uneven. Oh, oh no, that's the trail. And maybe in here. There's a little bit of a concave clip that will be fine. All right, let me get set up. So I got the tent set up. I'm just letting that air out a little bit. I've got the mattress sitting over here. I've got the mattress sitting over here. Got that inflated, see if it holds air. And then in my hands, I'm holding my dinner. This looks really good. Three bean chili mac. And that looks good. I am starving too. Oh, here comes my helicopter. Cool. Waiting for it. Um, yeah. So I'm gonna make this. Oh, you might actually be coming here. I was just joking. There he goes. 
see him flying around all day. There is an airport not too far from here. So yeah, I'm looking forward to this. I will let you know how this is. I am starving. I am ready for it. Now for tomorrow morning, I've got biscuits and gravy. I'm going to eat good tomorrow. Now my food canister is getting pretty empty. <laughs> Alright. I'm going to let that... Oh, I'm going to make some tea. Get a tea bag, make some tea, have some three bean chili mac. And then uh, I'm going to have a little fire. I'm going to live it up tonight. I'm going to enjoy my last night on the Allegheny Front Trail. So I did about 14 and a half miles and that first probably six miles was the hardest. So half my day was difficult. It wasn't, it wasn't like really challenging, but the, the rocks were slippery and there's a lot of leaves on the rocks and there's just a lot of like little climbs up and then down and up and then down. So I kept on slipping and sliding and there was a few down trees in that section too that slowed me down. Nothing crazy, but enough just to make it slow. But once I got to six mile run, it was, you know, a couple climbs, but nothing crazy. Beautiful forest, absolutely beautiful. I've got an awesome campsite tonight. It's an actual campsite. I got a fire pit. I got a spot to put my tent, <laughs> which is beneficial. Yeah, I'd, I'd have to say that I'm really enjoying this trail. It's really nice. I've got about 14 miles left for tomorrow. And as long as I don't run into anything like I hit yesterday, this morning, in that six miles, I should be all right. I know I've got some climbs, but I also know there's a, a decent section that's got a boardwalk in it. So I should be pretty fast through there. Well, I got a fire going, but it's not going to last long. All this wood is soaking wet. It's absolutely soaking wet. Throw a little bit on there, see if it'll dry, but... It might burn for another 10 minutes and be out. Yeah. I'm all right with it. There's something to do for a couple minutes. Well, a fire did not last. The water, uh, the water. Basically, yeah, the wood is water. It's all really wet. So I'd let it burn down. It stayed burned long enough for me to uh, organize all my, my food, get my garbage zip locked away, and filter my water. So it's really all I need. It's about 7 o'clock now. I uh, decided I'm just going to get in the tent. Got 14 miles tomorrow. And looking at the guidebook, the looks like the hardest part I have is going to be the very end. Like the climb back up to the car. So don't care what time to get back to the car. Um, I just want to get to those vistas. Because some really nice vistas to look out off the front. And uh, if I can cruise over to there and get up on that ridge and look at those vistas and I sit there all day, then I'm okay with that. That's going to do it for today. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I'm having a blast so far. It's a little cranky in the morning from the crappy sleep, but we'll see how things go today. I'm on a better level right now. So I'm not sliding. And uh, I just topped off the mattress. And I'll keep it. Well, I'll feel if it starts feeling flat again. It just has to make, make it through tonight if it's leaking. I, I think it might have just been because it got cold. And I was really kind of a lot of uh, humid breath into it. I hope. I hope that's all it was. Guess we'll find out. All right, thanks for watching. Next up will be part three. I'm excited to see that front. See you next. Do it again. Thank you.